Hello everyone, I'm Jay Shree. Welcome to my channel and to this tutorial for the crochet patterned tee or top. Um, here's another easy tutorial with a top-down pattern. We'll be working at the neckline, working down the yoke and completing the body of the top. Um, so the yarn that I've chosen to use is this um, natural cotton double knit and the recommended hook is a four millimeter hook. Um, so this, let me just explain this pattern. It works in multiples of eight. Now, if you decide to change the yarn, maybe go for a different weight in cotton, like for a, four, a four ply, or maybe even go for a, an acrylic, a light acrylic yarn, and this pattern works well. It's just that you may have to adjust that foundation chain right at the very start. So the pattern works in multiples of eight. You would have to uh, make that foundation chain and see that it fits over your head and around your neckline comfortably, not too tight around the neckline. And then you count your number of stitches and make certain that, it, oh sorry, you count your number of chains, make certain that it's in multiples of eight before you continue. But for the yarn that I've used, the double knit, which is the same as a light worsted um, yarn well, in a cotton, I've, um, I'll provide the, that foundation chain, the number of chains to be chained right at the start. And you'll find that on the top of the screens as we move along. So before we begin, a big thank you to everyone that subscribed and to anyone that's new to my channel. What I do is put out new patterns for you to hopefully enjoy. And if you do like what you see, please don't forget to subscribe and support my channel. Um, yes, let's begin. Hope you enjoy this tutorial. We'll begin with a slip knot. Then it's chain 112. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Continue to 112 chains. I now have 112 chains. So I need to join this chain that's attached to the hook to the first chain. And to do that, we must make certain that this entire chain is not twisted. So you'll join the first and last chain with a slip stitch. Round one, chain one, single crochet into that same stitch from where the chain one, one comes out of. So it's insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop. Then it's yarn over and go through two loops on the hook. Continue with single crochets into all chains. So again, insert your hook into the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through two loops on the hook. Continue to the end of the round. I'm at the end of round one, having worked those single crochets all across. So to join its slip stitch into that first single crochet right at the start. Round two, chain four, one, two, three, four. Chain four counts as a triple crochet. Now we'll work two triple crochets into that same stitch from where our chain four comes out of. And to work a triple crochet, it's yarn over twice. Insert the hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two loops on the hook, 
yarn over go through two loops on the hook yarn over go through two loops on the hook and then another triple crochet into that same space then it's chain two skip three stitches one two three into the next stitch single crochet chain two skip three stitches one two three into the next stitch work five triple crochets all into the one stitch so that's one two three chain two skip three one two three single crochet chain two skip three one two three and five triple crochets into the next stitch one two So that's the stitch pattern it will be a chain two skip three single crochet chain two skip three five triple crochets into one stitch continue to the end of the round I'm at the end of round two I've chained two and I have three stitches to go so right at the bottom of that first chain four I'll work two triple crochets one two and two in the round it's slip stitch into the fourth chain from chain four to join round three chain one single crochet into the same stitch space as chain one then it's chain four one two three four and single crochet into the single crochet from the round before chain four one two three four into that set of triple crochets from the round before the third triple crochet single crochet into that stitch chain four single crochet into the single crochet from the round before chain four single crochet into the third triple crochet from our set of five triple crochets and that's the stitch pattern for round three so it's chain four single crochet into the single crochet from the round before chain four single crochet into the third triple crochet from our set of five triple crochets continue to the end of the round I'm at the end of round three and I've chained four. I'll single crochet or slip stitch into that single crochet from the start to join. Round four, chain one, single crochet into that same space as chain one, chain four, one, two, three, four, and then it's a single crochet into that single crochet from the round before chain four one two three four single crochet into the single crochet from the round before and we'll continue with chain four and single crochet into the single crochet from the round before continue to the end of the round i'm at the end of round four and i've chained four so I'll slip stitch into that single crochet from the start to join. Round five, chain three, one, two, three. Chain three counts as a double crochet. So for this round, we'll be working double crochets all across. We'll work four double crochets into the chain four spaces and one into 
the single crochets so to work a double crochet it's yarn over insert the hook into the space pull up a loop yarn over go through two loops on the hook yarn over go through two loops on the hook and that was one double crochet then there's two three four four double crochets into that chain four space and one double crochet into the single crochet from the round before so yes you'll continue with the stitch pattern four double crochets into the chain four space and a double crochet into the single crochet from the round before that's the stitch pattern to the end of the round I'm at the end of round five and I've worked those double crochets all across. So to end the round, it's slip stitch into the third chain from chain three to join. Round six, chain three, chain three counts as a double crochet. So here I'm working double crochets into um, all the stitches. However, I forgot to mention that for a round five repeat, you need to count your stitches. So I've counted my stitches and I have 140 stitches. I need to bring up my stitch count to a multiple of eight in round six. And that would be 144 stitches for the size I'm working. Now, in order to do that, I need to increase my stitch count by four. So to increase, it's you working two double crochets into one stitch. So as I said, for this round, we're working double crochets, but at the same time, we're working those increases to bring up our stitch count to a multiple of eight. So my increases, I'm not going to work them all in one go. I'll space them out evenly. Maybe I'll work two at on this side of the yoke and the other two on the other side of the yoke. So let me show you how to work an increase. So it's work double crochets until your first increase. Okay, so I'll work that first increase. It's two double crochets into one stitch. Then I'll continue working those increases to bring up my stitch count to a multiple of eight. So you would do the same depending on the size you're working. For a round five, count your stitches and in round six, you'll increase to bring it up to a multiple of eight. Like I said, in my case, I have 140 stitches for round five. I need to bring it up to 144 stitches because eight goes into 144. And to do that, I need to work four increases. So you'll continue with your double crochets and increases to the end of the round. I'm at the end of round six and I've worked those four increases spaced apart. And to end the round, it's slip stitch into the third chain from chain three to join. I've completed the yoke by repeating round two to round six. So the pattern for the yoke is round two, round three, round four, round five, and round six. And you'll see that we'll continue to repeat these rounds. So for every round five repeat, you need to count the number of stitches and then you'll work your increase in round six, around six repeat. That's to bring your stitch count up to a multiple of eight. The yoke now measures 19 centimeters or seven and a half inches. And that's the armhole depth for a size medium. If you feel that you don't want to work to the armhole depth, you can fit on the yoke and make certain that it ends in line with the armholes. Oh, sorry, the underarm. Um, okay, just one other thing. 
I also ended on a round four repeat. So if you look at the pattern, the way that I've ended right at the end of the yoke, it's my round two, round three and round four. So yes, you'll repeat round two to round six, but right at the end, you will work round two, round three and round four to complete the yoke. We'll now move on to the body. And to do that, we've got to separate the yoke into four, making it the front, the back and the two armhole spaces. So to do that, as you see, here's my start and I'm going to fold right at the start. So here's my start, as you see, and I've got it folded here and it's folded on the other side as well. So you've got your yoke laid out flat and there's two folds on either end. One is at the start and here's the other one on the other side. Okay, so my start will mark off the first point and on the other side, I'll mark it off with a stitch marker, that folded edge. Now, I'll take my yoke again, turning it and placing the, that stitch marker that I placed initially in line with the start. Making, laying the yoke flat again and I've got two folded edges on either side and those two edges I'll place a stitch marker each. So here's one and here's the other. Now I've got four separations on my yoke. So now, now that I have the four points on my yoke, I'll match up the start to one of the stitch markers on one side. And on the other side, you'll see that the other two stitch markers line up. So if you look at the start, you'll see that it's right here in line with this five triple crochet from the rounds before and that's what i want to do at my other other stitch markers so if i look at the stitch marker on the other side and here it's falling in line with that single crochet i'd like to move it also in line with the five double crochets the single crochet right at the top So that's sorted on one side and on the other side, I'd like to do the same, moving my stitch marker outwards and in line with the next five triple crochet, that single crochet right at the top. And on the other side, I'll do the same, moving my stitch marker outwards in line with the five triple crochet, that single crochet right at the top. So now if we look at the yoke, in between the stitch markers and the start, I have the front body and on the other side, the back body and on either side, the armhole spaces. Now that we've marked off our front body, back body and armhole spaces, we'll continue on with the body. So it's chain three and chain three counts as a double crochet. So here we'll continue with the pattern as we did for the yoke. However, there are two changes. Like if you look at the pattern here, we'll be working around five repeat. So in this case for around five for the yoke, we worked four uh, triple cro double crochets into the chain four space. However, for the body, we'll only work three double crochets into those chain four spaces and we'll work a double crochet into the single crochet. 
So into that chain four space, it's three double crochets, which is one, two, three, and a double crochet into the single crochet. And you'll continue until you reach the first stitch marker on the other side. I'm at stitch marker one and I've worked the double crochets all across. I've worked a double crochet into that single crochet marked by stitch marker one. Then it's chain three, one, two, three, and I'll join to stitch marker two, skipping the stitches in between. Join into that single crochet with a double crochet. Continue working the stitch pattern to stitch marker three. So that's now three double crochets into the chain four spaces and a double crochet into the single crochets. I'm at stitch marker three, having worked the double crochet into that single crochet marked by stitch marker three. So then it's chain three, one, two, three, and I'll now join to the start, my chain three at the start, skipping the stitches in between. And here's the chain three from the start, and I'll join with it slip stitch into the third chain. So here I have the second armhole space. Okay, so I spoke about two changes being made to the pattern with regards to the body. So we've spoke about this first chain where a uh, first change where we've worked the three double crochets into the chain four space instead of the four double crochets. So now for the next round, which is a repeat of round six, I'll count my stitches as normal, counting my chain, my chain as well under the armholes as um, three stitches as well on one side and three on the other. So I'll count all the stitches, including the chains, and then I've got to bring my next round for round six into um, a multiple of eight again and that's the last time I'll be doing that because as you see for um, the next repeats of round five having worked the three um, a double crochets into that chain four space it will keep my stitch count the same the only reason that I'm counting now is because I've worked the chain under the armholes so yes for round six now I'll, before working round six, I'll count my st stitches and I'll bring up round six to a multiple of eight. So that means I'll increase to make sure that my stitch count is in a multiple of eight. I've continued on with the body, repeating round two to round six. However, there were those two changes for round five. It's three double crochets into the chain four space and for round six, well, there was no need to count my stitches or increase my stitch count because it just worked out. Um, so yes, you'll repeat round two to round six to your desired length and then you'll fasten off and weave in all those ends.